Well, hello there. This is Vichuals, the chess noob, learning and having fun with chess. Happy New Year. At the time of recording, it's the 1st of January 2024. And what better way to start the new year than creating a video, um, a complete guide on one of my favourite lines in all of chess, which is the giraffe attack in the Vienna game. It's a silly line, it's a suboptimal, suboptimal line, but potentially very, very winning at the beginner intermediate level, and heaps and heaps of fun. In fact, with my last video on the giraffe attack, one of my subscribers produced this very cool logo, sent it to me, I'm going to use it a little bit uh, in this video. Let's have a first a quick look at what the giraffe attack can do for you. Two very, very quick, very fun games. The most recent game I played. Now, giraffe attack begins with the Vienna game. E4, E5, knight C3. And black has to play the, um, the Anderson defense, the bishop to C5. It occurs about 1 in 10 Vienna games. And the giraffe attack is the immediate queen to G4. So here black is a little bit ahead, minus 0.5. Our goal is immediately attacking that pawn. The most common response by black at the beginning intermediate level is to bring out the queen, defends that pawn, also potential double attack there, and it's a real, it's a potentially a real threat, you know. If uh, you let the queen go there, that potentially is mate. And so block that with knight. Now in this game, black played um, also the next most common move, which is knight to c6. That is a blunder. Basically, in this position, black will lose that rook. That is the best move. Why? Because they have to defend against the d5 square, because knight d5, very, very powerful tactic. In fact, on page 38 of my new book, 50 plus 2, Chess Quick Wins, Tactical Ideas for Exciting Chess for Beginner Players. Now on Amazon. So now we have knight d5 attacking the queen, attacking that c7 square, comes with absolute fork of king and rook. Now in this position, uh, you notice, you know, I'm way up on time here, it's a 15 plus 10 game. Black now spends almost a minute trying to calculate it out. They were obviously very, very focused on that absolute fork. And so after a minute, they calculated king to d8. <laughs> Blunder, because he straight up hung their queen. Captures a queen. Emotional damage! Emotional damage, and Black resigns. Let's have a look at another game. So that game was only, ooh, how many moves was that? That was only six moves. I think the next move, next game is even shorter. I think it's uh, five moves. And again, we start off e4, e5, knight, uh, c3, Anderson defense, giraffe attack, queen to g4. Uh, starts very similarly, queen out, knight forward. And here, black plays another relatively common move in this position, which is, ooh, I can develop, um, form a very nice chain of pawns with a discovered attack on the opponent's queen. Forgetting, of course, that bishop is hanging. Queen captures a bishop with check. Black draws back their queen and basically on my turn opts to resign after suffering emotional damage. So that's uh, what the giraffe attack can do. Well, let's go have a look at how to play the giraffe attack in a little more detail. And for this, I'm actually going to switch over to Lee Chess. Now, normally I do all of my analyses on chess.com analytic engine. Now, in this case, Lee Chess has a bit of an advantage because um, they show all the uh, community games. So you can have a look at win ratios, not just the evaluation. And particularly in the giraffe attack, the win ratios are probably a little bit more important than the evaluation. So let's go take a look. So let me just load that up. There we go. So, so this is the Lee Chess interface. Now here, you can see, this is what I really like about Lee Chess, that you can see the Lee Chess database. Uh, so here, um, I've set it to just show lower rated players, so um, so lower rated players, only of rapid blitz and rapid. 
So all set. Now even there, there's something about 2.7 billion games, and it gives you some really, really good statistical data. So let's have a look. So uh, with the uh, giraffe attack, as we know, starts off with the Vienna game, and then Anderson defense, the giraffe attack, queen to g uh, to g4. And you'll already note that white already has a little bit of a win advantage, 52% to 45%. So that's quite, that's quite significant, actually. Um, and especially given that black, as I said, is a little bit ahead, about minus 0 0.5. Now let's have a look at um, what are the most common responses by black. So as I mentioned, Queen to f6 happens about half the time. We need to know how to deal with that. Um, and the good thing for us is that's kind of a bit of a mistake. Now the g6, so trying to defend, you know, that, that problematic g7 pawn is the next most common move. That's also kind of a mistake. Now the best move for black, in fact the only move they really should be making, is knight f6. Six, and that's something we need to know how to manage because 14% of the time, you know, about one in seven games. But notice that this is not a common, uh, this is not a common response. If we go back, so here, the Vienna game, how often does Anderson defense occur? Here we go, it occurs about 10% of games. And here, no, um, even if black knows to play the Anderson, they will practically never see the giraffe attack, which then only occurs 1% of the time. But that is the best move, uh, and there's a particular trap for us. We need to know, we need to know uh, what to do. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other moves which we'll very, very quickly look at, which are all basically terrible. Let's have a look at what to do when black plays accurately, because there's, uh, there's a thing here that we need to know for white that we should not do. So, no. so knight to f6 with an attack on our queen. And you can see here, most people playing um, the giraffe attack don't know what they're doing, and the queen captures the pawn on g7, because 83% of the time. The surprising thing to me here is that white still has a positive win ratio, because that's a straight up mistake. Let's see why. Queen captures, and you will notice that the most common response now for black actually has black winning. Why is that the case? Well, the rook now attacks the queen, defended by the knight. Queen has pretty much only one square it can move to, which is the h6 square. But now, uh, the, the move that black needs to know, uh, and you know, they may well find it, is bishop captures. And if we now take, well, end of the game for us. Absolute fork, royal fork, king and queen. Game over, we lose. Uh, effective, that's almost four, so after bishop uh, captures a pawn, we basically have to move the king to d1. That's pretty much the only uh, non-losing move for us, but you know, you can see in this position, it's absolutely horrible for white. We should not enter into this position. So, definitely in this position, we cannot take. Uh, and in fact, this is why it's the giraffe attack. So Eric Schiller, in his book on uncommon chess openings, actually named, uh, named, this, uh, named this move. It's a giraffe because white is sticking out their neck. Now, the best move here is to place the queen onto g3. And in this uh, setup, so in the giraffe attack, Queen to g3 is often a very, very good move. Now here, potentially, we are attacking the, uh, the e pawn on e5, which comes with check. However, we do need to be careful here because um, as long as the knight and bishop here, the bishop can always move back and the queen doesn't really have an attack uh, and the queen potentially is a bit overexposed. But there's always potentially an attack queen attacking the e5, the e pawn there, which comes with check. That's always potentially available. Now here, 
Let's see what to do. So the most common move for black is short castles. And notice we're still a little bit ahead, but it's pretty equal. And this is basically why it's good for black. Now the best move now here for us is this move, bishop to e2. Because bishop to e2, what we want is to cover that square, the h5 square, so that the knight can't jump there. Uh, and potentially what we want is now uh, to play d3, uh, open up the dark square diagonal so that the bishop uh, and the queen have a very, very nice attack there. Uh, let's say, you know, black plays the most next common move here. Now you can see d3, uh, and now uh, let's say, you know, this will be clueless. Developing other knight seemingly looks good. And now we have the bishop here. And basically, um, if they push this, which is their, uh, which is probably the best move and most common move, we get to take the rook, uh, and we've got a very, very nice uh, advantage. Alternatively, you can see the next most common move, which occurs 20% of the time, uh, black straight up hangs their knight. Again, very, very good. And that's uh, potentially the best way we want to play here. Now let's go back to here. Let's say black immediately now plays d6. Uh, what should we do now? Bishop here is still best, yep. Just playing solid uh, and here, let's turn that off. Yep, so here you just have to basically play chess. Uh, potentially the, the idea uh, is still to see whether or not you can get that potential attack with the bishop and the queen. Generally, if black plays accurately, um, it's a fairly balanced game. You're not terribly behind, um, but you're not particularly ahead. You do always have a potential problem with the queen slightly in the wrong place. You may be forced to trade queens at some point. All right, so that is, oops, there we go. Let's go back here. That is where black plays knight to f3, the best move. Most important thing to remember is after this, do not, you cannot take, absolutely cannot take. All right, back here. The next most common move is queen to f6 occurs. Um, so this occurs half time, it's a single most common response by black. Uh, and here uh, we have lots of potential fun. So here, first thing you need to do is you must defend. Okay, you, you must block uh, that attack. And the thing for black here, as we saw before, is that they have to defend that square. So the best two moves is knight to, um, knight to e7, or potentially they can also play c6. They have to defend that square from that very powerful knight to center of the board, queen's knight to d5. However, you will see that that these are not common moves. It occurs less than a quarter of the time. Much more commonly, they will play this. They'll be lulled into a false sense of security. We saw we already, what we already need to do. Attack, attack. And here, in fact, the best move for black is basically to trade queen. So queen to g6, basically we should trade and we, we end up winning. A rook. Though that knight is a little bit stuck in the corner, you still need to win this game, but you can see 80%, you know, basically 80% win, you should win this game. So that's basically what we should do when knight comes out. It's basically completely winning for us, knight to d5. Now what if in this position, rather than playing that, uh, that knight, they play the other knight with an attack on our queen? So what should we do here? Well, we place our queen on the parking square. That's what we should do. Uh, and here, depending on what they do, you can see that's the most common, uh, that's the most common move, all those short castles. Let's say they do this. What should we do now? Basically, same attack, okay? We do the same thing, all right? And basically, their knight is kind of stuck on the edge of the board. Okay, what if uh, here they instead short castles? Well, what we should here, uh, what we should do here potentially is, yep, we can do the same thing. We can attack the queen, or potentially we can just straight up cash out. That's okay as well. Basically, force a trade of queens, their knight kind of in a dumb place, um, you know, and here uh, we've got a little bit more development. 
uh, and you can see we still should potentially be doing quite all right. If black does play one of these two moves, so knight to e7 or c6, in this position black is basically all right and you just have to play a game of chess. Okay, so what's the next most common move? They play g6. And when you see g6, basically there is this long-term weakness here along that dark square diagonal. Potentially we can make use of it. If they castle short, the, uh, the bishop potentially attacks down again through that weak dark square diagonal. We have uh, That's always what we're potentially looking at. Here, there's a couple of ways to go. The best move is actually to place the queen on the parking square. However, in this position, there is potentially a trap. You can see bishop to c4 seems to give a win advantage to black, but we do need to take those win advantages with a grain of salt. Let's see what happens. So here, the trickier line is actually to play bishop to c uh, to c4 immediately. Looking there, you know, potentially there's always a future, you know, mating sort of attack there. That's what it. Uh, that's what it looks like. Here you can see the single most common move by Black occurs over a third of the time. Is they think, oh, hold on, it looks like I've got an attack on the bishop with a simultaneous discovered attack on the queen. Looks like it must be winning. However, you can see if they do that most common move, um, you know, it looks like Black is winning, right? However, once they make that move, you can see there is a response here where we completely flip it. If we play queen now to g3, almost always, you can see every single line is good for us. They take and basically check, fork, uh, there's you know, another fork there. Doesn't matter what they do, they'll probably play queen here. We take, it's absolutely disastrous for black and here we're winning and so this is why i mentioned we do need to take these win ratios with a grain of salt because in this position looks like black is completely winning here uh suddenly we are completely winning and this is false and because basically what happens most commonly is that in this position neither black or white knows what they're doing and so white actually has blunders position but here white actually has a completely winning move with keen queen to g3 they take and bang we've got this very lovely absolute triple fork and we win the game all right however as i said against against um g6 here the best move the most solid move actually is to play queen to g3 uh, because if we uh, uh, because uh, the reason for that is if we left it here the problem for us is that this move is actually quite good uh, potentially for black and effectively we're almost equal you have to play very carefully you know you can still pop your, uh, pop your sort of, uh, pop the, uh, the queen there but you know it still causes potential problems it's not losing but we it becomes quite a complicated position to play and black often you know does fine so uh, the optimal move is uh, queen to g3 in this position against uh, against g6 and here let's have a look at what black is most likely to do g6 now here potentially the best move for us is knight to a4 so bishop here is still potentially quite good um, you can see black still has a good so white still has a very very good win ratio uh, but you don't have an absolute you know, advantage uh, and often i find if black plays very solidly from this position you basically end up trading uh, trading queens it's mostly equal it gets quite positional uh, and so here potentially what you're aiming for knight attacks basically what has happened is they've, they've blocked in their bishop bishop's probably going to uh, potentially uh, go back here uh, and what we're aiming for is really just taking uh, they'll take back damage pawn structure uh, we should potentially be winning not very many games here but white has an advantage so that's what to do if they do that what if they play the next most, most common move which is knight out this way here the best move is potentially bishop here okay because that potentially sort of pins their knight so the most common move now is they still play d6 thinking that that whoops 
is still defended, but of course that is now pinned. And the attack here, remember how I said we want to potentially attack down these dark squares? What we potentially have now is an, a sacrificial attack. So, next most common move, they want to unpin that knight. So, bishop to d7, we take, we take, but now you can see completely winning for white. Knight captures, if they capture here, bang, we once again have that very powerful triple fork. Um, you know, they can block with bishop or they can block with the queen. Either way, white is completely winning again in this position. So um, that's potentially what you want to do uh, against the g3 response. All right, what about some of these rarer things, okay? So, so we, we've seen queen f6, very winning. We've seen g6, we saw the knight, best move for black. You know, have to be careful you don't fall into the trap. Uh, what about against d6? Okay, here we just take, and we're basically doing really, really well. That's all you need to know. Uh, what about against d5? Same thing, <laughs> we just take. What about against this move? Now we're getting to the bottom barrel stuff here. A, to do a sacrificial attack, that's fine. We take, uh, you know, they might give here a check, but that's fine. We block and it's completely okay. So against those rest of these minor things, it's not scary at all. Um, against those uh, three main lines, which is where uh, black can defend here with bishop, knight, or g3. They're the three most common responses. There are traps along each of those lines. Very often it's still very winning for black. Hope you enjoyed and I hope you will include the giraffe attack in your repertoire moving into 2024. Have a good day.